Hey everyone, saying that iPadOS 16 changes everything for the iPad is really not an exaggeration. This is an update that many of us, including myself, have been waiting for for many, many years. Okay, so what's the deal with iPadOS 16? Why should you care about this software update as a current iPad owner or future iPad owner? Well, first of all, you're getting all of those main iOS 16 features that Apple talked about that are on the iPhone, except for the new lock screen and some of those tweaks. Unfortunately, they're not coming to the iPad, at least for now. But besides that, there are really some great iOS 16 features you're going to be getting on your iPad. But where it's really exciting are those iPad-specific features. So first up and most exciting is Stage Manager, which is basically Apple's marketing term for having floating windows and resizable windows on the iPad, finally. Now, split screen multitasking isn't going anywhere, it's still there if you want it, but when you want to activate Stage Manager, it's as simple as tapping this small button in the control center, you tap it, and then it's activated. And it pretty much brings this whole new style of multitasking to the iPad. So when you tap an app, it opens up in this view, and you can resize the app by dragging the bottom corner with touch, or if you're using a trackpad or mouse, you can drag any of the edges to resize the app to different sizes to fit your screen. So apps can basically be rescaled from sort of a tablet style wide view to a much more mobile style view as well. And there's a lot of flexibility with how much you can actually scale these apps. I'm genuinely surprised. And of course, you can also still go full screen with your apps as well if you just want to focus on one thing at a time. And then if you drag another app into this view, it'll open up as a floating window as well. And you can have about four apps open at the same time where you can kind of see everything. Some stuff overlaps, but you can really get a good little setup going here with multitasking. And if you open up any more apps, they'll end up in this little side pane on the left. And you can swap between apps you have open in a multitasking group or single apps simply just by tapping between them. It's easy, works pretty well. And these floating windows work as you'd hope and expect, mostly. The windows themselves are not actually freeform like a desktop computer or Samsung DeX. The scaling and positioning is kind of in different levels, basically. So you can't just scale or position an app anywhere on the screen. They're kind of in different levels of how much you can actually move or adjust the size of these windows, which personally I thought I would hate at first, but honestly, I don't mind. The feature does actually work pretty well. Now, I've been using iPadOS 16 over the past few weeks, and at first, I thought Stage Manager was kind of clumsy and clunky and just annoying to use, but now, I love using it. It's great, it's genuinely useful, and I've really gotten the hang of how to master these floating windows and how to make it all work for my workflow. And pretty much all the apps I've tried with Stage Manager so far, whether they're optimized or not, work fairly well. Now, some apps can't be resized to a smaller window, like Affinity Photo, for example, but those apps make sense for having a larger window size. But mostly here, everything's resizable, everything works pretty well, third-party apps, Apple apps, I haven't really had too many issues with Stage Manager. This all being said though, it definitely has to be simplified and cleaned up a little bit, things have to be a bit more consistent, but overall, I'm very happy that floating windows are finally on iPadOS. There's also a new UI scaling feature for the iPad called More Space. Because you're going to have a lot of windows and things open all at once, you're going to want to have apps and text scale better for your iPad's display. And this new setting basically does that and does it very well. Apps, text, images, everything just scales much better on your iPad's display with this setting checked off. Apple also talked about something called desktop class app improvements, and from my understanding, this really hasn't rolled out to apps yet because it's something developers have to add to their application specifically, but it basically seems like a series of small tweaks across the system to bring it much more in line with macOS. There's also a new consistent set of customizable navigation bars across Apple and third-party apps if developers choose. There's actually a bunch of videos and information on Apple's developer site that really details how these new desktop class improvements can really benefit applications. So I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. But despite saying desktop class applications, no, there's no Final Cut. No, there's no full Adobe Suite. We're not getting those yet, if at all. Now, speaking of desktop style apps, there is another really big feature for the iPad here. It's basically full external display support. So when you plug the iPad into an external display, it basically creates a full desktop computer style experience. No more black bars on the sides, it's full screen, your wallpaper scales, the iPad UI scales, it's beautiful. 
And it's not just a mirror of the iPad display. No, this is full external display support where you can have stuff running on the iPad and stuff running on the display separately. And from what I've seen, iPadOS scales very well across pretty much all display aspect ratios. So ultra wide, 16 by nine, pretty much anything. It scales well, looks great, works great. And just like macOS in the settings, you can really customize how the iPad interacts with the display. So you can tweak things like display arrangement, frame rate mirroring, brightness, and even have the display mirror the iPad as well if you prefer that for the viewing experience. And like I said, you can open apps specifically on the display and apps specifically on the iPad's display. So you can be watching a video in full screen on one display, have a project open on the other display, and just be swapping them out. It's, it's a wonderful experience. Basically all I'm explaining here is how a laptop or desktop computer would work when you plug it into an external display. And the iPad works just as well. Or I should say it will work just as well because with this beta release, it works decent enough, but honestly, it's not the best or smoothest experience. But this has really been a good demonstration on how full external display support will actually work with the iPad. And you can finally live your iPad desk setup dreams and really make your perfect iPad workspace. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, so these are kind of the main big headlining features coming to iPad OS 16 that really changed the iPad experience. But that's not all. These changes also impact the entire lineup of iPads now that are currently released and future iPads as well. I have a bit of bad news for you. All the features I mentioned throughout this video, like stage manager with all the floating windows, external display support, and even the scaling feature I talked about briefly, that's only gonna be available on M-series iPads. So basically just the M1 iPad Air, M1 iPad Pro, and future iPad models that have M-series processors, which kind of eliminates most of the lineup getting these new features. Now you will still be able to get iPadOS 16 on your previous iPad models that don't have an M-series processor, but any of these big features I talked about throughout this video, those are not coming to your iPad, unfortunately. So basically, if you have the 2018 iPad Pro, 2020 iPad Pro, base model iPad, the previous iPad Air, and even the new iPad Mini, they're not getting any of these big new features. And it basically feels like you're getting half a software update when you get iPadOS 16 for these previous iPad models. And it really is quite sad and disappointing, especially if you just bought a new iPad Mini or refurbished 2020 iPad Pro, which you might have thought, these are future-proof, they're gonna get all the new features. No, they're not. Apple says this is due to the M1 processor having a memory swap feature which enables the iPad to have so many apps open and run so much all at the same time, while previous non-M series iPads don't have this feature available. And look, it could happen, but at this point it seems pretty unlikely that Apple is going to bring all of these new features to older iPad models over time. So how your iPad is today is how it's going to be kind of stuck for the next few years with small updates year over year with iPadOS. Now, I'm gonna give Apple the benefit of the doubt. I'm sure that these new iPadOS software features, especially with multitasking, are very processor intensive. But at the same time, it's very convenient that now Apple finally has a reason to convince you to upgrade your iPad to a newer model. Especially with this year's rumored M2 iPad Pro, it's gonna be a pretty big upgrade as well. Like I've said a few times, it definitely is disappointing, but from Apple's perspective, it certainly does make a lot of sense. But despite all of this, overall, no matter what iPad model you have, I definitely recommend upgrading to iPadOS 16 when it comes available. There are some really great features and enhancements from iOS 16 that are making their way to the iPad as well, which is great. And if you have one of the new compatible models, getting things like Stage Manager and external display support and some of the other desktop class improvements and scaling, those are some wonderful features that are finally here on the iPad. It's just a shame they're so limited to just like two models right now. Either way, let me know your thoughts on iPadOS 16 in the comments down below. What do you think of the new limitations on which iPads can get some of the new features? And also, just tell me how your day's going, honestly. Love to hear it. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe, and thank you for watching.